Oaxaca is the state where my mom's side of the family is from and is known for seven different moles. But in reality, there are a lot more being made throughout Mexico. If you ordered mole at a restaurant, it was probably mole poblano, which originates from the state of Puebla. It's sweet, complex, and packed with so much flavor. If you feel you've never had mole, think again. Enchilada sauce is a type of mole, a much less complex version since it lacks the nutty tones and the richness of some of the spices I will be adding. Personally, I like a mole with just a little bit of heat, and that's what I'm going to be making today, mole colorado. But the recipe I'm making today is not my family's recipe. I watch my mom and film her make mole several times, and I've never perfected her recipe. Every time I jot down the recipe, it'll change the next time I see her make it. And she'll make adjustments as she's cooking, which makes it harder to track. Maybe one day when I perfect my mom's recipe, I will make a revised video to feature her recipe. But in the meantime, let me know down in the comments if that interests you. The ingredients of a mole can be divided into five categories. The chiles, the spices, the seeds and nuts, the fruits, and a sweet element. The mole I'm making today has the following flavor profile. For our first element, let's start this up by preparing the chiles. I'm going to de-stem and de-seed five guajillos and eight ancho chiles. Now these aren't spicy at all, but they're for flavor. Now for heat, I'm adding three dried chiles. I believe these are costeños, but you can substitute these with chile de arbol. Now I'm saying heat very loosely because although it has a touch of heat, children or those sensitive to heat will be able to handle it. If you want spicy, you can certainly do that by adding more of these spicy chiles. I wouldn't go too spicy though. We're making a sauce that you'd want to drench your food with and enjoy it and maybe lick it off your plate. We aren't making a salsa here where, you know, you'd use sparingly on a dish. So be very, very careful with the heat level is my best advice. The more complex moles have 30 plus ingredients in them. But here I'm trying to simplify it and make it a bit more accessible for people and maybe encourage people to try it themselves. Yes, it's still about 20 ingredients, but at least seven of those ingredients are things you should already have in your kitchen. You know, like salt, pepper, tomatoes, onion, garlic. If you're missing or you can't find one or two of the ingredients, it's fine. Use what you have, or you could also substitute in ingredients. Now, when mole was invented, that's exactly what they did to create it. They gathered the ingredients they had, mixed them in a pot, and created the mole. Once you de-seed, de-stem your peppers, I'm gonna go ahead and roast them. You're waking up the flavors with the chiles at this point. So who's responsible for inventing mole? Well, mole is credited to have been created and invented in the state of Puebla, which is very close to Oaxaca. The word mole comes from the Nahuatl word moli, which basically means a mixture. The story goes that mole was invented by a group of nuns who gathered a variety, range of chocolate, nuts, spices, chiles, bread, basically whatever they could gather, mixed them and cooked it all down, and then poured over some turkey. The archbishop that was visiting loved the dish and was super impressed by it. The rest you can say is history. Since then, the mole has become a very important dish in Mexican culture, and many, many have made their own versions. Now for the really authentic moles, you have to try it from Puebla or from Oaxaca. Now if you ever find yourself in LA, be sure to stop by one of the many Oaxaca restaurants that exist here in LA. They are everywhere, so be sure to stop on by. A little char is okay, but be sure not to overdo it, or it'll have a bit of a bitter profile, something you don't want. You'll see the skin bubble up and eventually the skin will be very, very brittle. Be careful not to burn them though. There's a very fine line between a nice toast and a burn. Now once the peppers are charred, we'll move them into a bowl and then pour over some hot boiling water. We'll let the peppers hydrate while we prepare the rest of the ingredients. Next we'll want to roast all the ingredients that need roasting, starting with 3 quarter cups of sesame seeds. Now this is the first part to our nuttiness seed element. Roast the sesame seeds until they get some great color. Now if they start popping everywhere, turn the heat down. Be very patient and roast under a medium to low heat. Once it gets a good color, let's remove out to the side. Careful, these are very hot. Next let's add our spices. For the spice element, we'll need 1 tablespoon of oregano, a half a tablespoon of thyme, 4 cloves, a teaspoon or so of peppercorns, about three allspice peppercorns and give them a gentle roast. It doesn't need much time. 
let's just start waking up some of these flavors. Let's remove. We can put these spices in the blender, but if your blender isn't very good, you might consider blending this in your spice grinder. It'll help you save a bit of time during the blending process. Next, let's fry up the remaining ingredients. I have a little bit of oil that I'll be frying up a quarter cup of raw peanuts and an eighth cup of raw almonds. These, along with our sesame seeds, will contribute to the nuttiness aspects to our mole. Remove and let's fry up a quarter cup of raisins. The raisins will add a touch of sweet. This is both our fruit element and the sweet element. People will also add plantains. For sweeter, richer moles, people will add chocolate. But since I'm making a red mole or a coloradito, I will only be adding a bit of the raisins just to add a touch of sweet. The touch of sweetness isn't much, but it's enough to help balance the chile flavor and the savory notes of our toasted spices. I also want to add some animal crackers to give it a touch more sweetness, but I completely forgot to add them in. If you want to make a sweet mole, I suggest you add the chocolate towards the very end when you're simmering the mole for the final touches. Next, let's fry up a chopped onion. Use half an onion if it's a large one. Peel all the garlic cloves off from a full bulb and let's fry these up too. Once the onion is translucent, I'm going to add three Roma tomatoes that have been charred, chopped, and I'll add them in to finish cooking. You can certainly use uncooked tomatoes in this recipe. It'll just require you to cook down the sauce a little bit more during the simmering stage. I'm also dropping in the quarter stick of cinnamon that I forgot to drop in earlier when I roasted the other spices. We'll just let it relax a bit in here with our onion garlic tomato mixture. Next, let's blend our chiles that are hydrated by now. I'm gonna use four cups of chicken broth in total, but I'm only pouring in two cups of the chicken broth to start it off. And a cup of the water I let the chiles hydrate in. Let's blend. and drop in our onion and garlic tomato cinnamon mixture. At this point, you have the base for an enchilada sauce. The spices, fruits, seeds, and nuts is what separates an enchilada sauce from a mole. And you'd be surprised how quickly the flavor changes once we mix these ingredients a little later. Let's strain out the mixture. Now straining isn't 100% required, but I find it a more pleasant texture if the ingredients are strained. It's much smoother and less grainy. Although it's a pain to do, I think it's worth it at the end. Once strained, I'm gonna put this chile pulp back in the blender along with your other ingredients. Let's add our fried peanuts, almonds, our raisins, our sesame seeds, and the spices we grounded separately. Let's add two more cups of chicken broth and a cup of water and let's give it a good blend. As you can see, I did the blending in two stages, mainly because I know from experience that the mixture would be too thick if I added everything in at once. I haven't added any salt at this point. The broth didn't have any either. For the salt content, I'm dropping in some chicken bouillon, two tablespoons of nor seasoning. Now, once our mixture is blended, let's strain it. Once we strained all of this goodness, we'll want to fry it up. You can use a bit of lard to fry it up, but I'm throwing some bacon grease that I cooked up earlier and a little bit more oil. If you don't have lard or even bacon grease, regular oil would work just fine. Keep stirring and keep simmering. Let's taste. If the mole seems to be leaning too much towards the strong chile flavor, Add in some tomato sauce to balance it. A small can of tomato sauce will be enough. Keep tasting it for saltiness. I feel it needs about another half a teaspoon of chicken bouillon. Keep stirring. In about 10 minutes, the tomato sauce we added should have cooked down. Let's drop in some breadcrumbs so it thickens nicely. Keep tasting for salt. At this point, if it requires more salt, drop a few pinches of salt until you're happy with it. Keep stirring and cook this mole down good. At this point, we are checking for balance. Now, if you want sweet, you will add some semi-sweet chocolate and some piloncillo, also known as panela. 
If you don't have it, substitute it with some brown sugar. As mentioned, I will not be making a sweet mole here and I will not add any chocolate. The only hint of sweetness was given by the raisins I used and the animal cookies I forgot to add. Once you have the perfect flavor profile, cook down a bit and the consistency should have a nice gravy feel to it and shouldn't be runny at all. This mole would also be used for the sauce in our tamales during Christmas, but I love pouring some mole over turkey. This is how I ate turkey growing up and as I explained earlier, it's how mole was first eaten when it was invented. If you don't have turkey, it'll go great with some chicken or even pork. Now, if you don't feel like eating mole this way, then make yourself some emoladas, maybe some chilaquiles or some old fashioned enchiladas. There are plenty of ways to eat some leftover mole. And as I mentioned in my last video, that's how we enjoyed it growing up. Now, if you want to watch that turkey video, then be sure to check it out here.